Hello, hello, dear viewers. Welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In this video, we are going to discuss about planetary gear sets. We'll be looking at the principle of operation of a planetary gear set, and we will see how it operates. So here we have two planetary gear sets with components disassembled in such a manner. Then when we look at the components, we have the ring gear, which is the outer gear, where we have a T's on the inside. Here is the ring gear. We have the planet pinions. These pinions, they are the planet pinions. And here we have the carrier. This is the planet carrier. And in the middle, we have the sun gear. This will be the sun gear. This will be the sun gear. Now, as you have seen, these two planetary gear units are sharing a single sun gear. So for ease of understanding, let's just have a look at one planetary gear assembly. Let's put it in here. And let's put the sun in here. And let's put this aside. They are all the same, but the principle of operating is the same. Here we have a ring gear, here we have a planet gear, and they will be, it will be using this sun gear. The planetary gear unit is a very crucial part of automatic transmission. So gear and speed will be selected by using the planetary gear assembly. They are very important because they don't involve any synchronization. They don't involve any sliding gear. So they are quiet and smooth in operation. Shifting will be well done. So that is an advantage of the planetary gear assembly. And the other assembly advantage of the planetary gear unit is that you can have multiple speed by using a single planetary gear unit. Now let's have a look at the principle of operation. Now by having this planetary gear unit, we can have multiple speeds. We can have a direct drive, we can have a reduction, we can have an overdrive. Let's see. Now, for you to clearly see, let's mark. Let's say, let's mark here, let's mark here, and also let's mark the ring gear as well. Now, remember that in most of the cases, for the planetary gear to have a speed, one of them will be held stationary, while one will be used as an input, one will be used as an output, and the other will be held stationary. For ease of illustration, let's hold the ring gear. Let's keep the ring gear stationary and see how this operates. For example, let's say the sun gear will be the input, the ring gear will be I mean, the planet carrier will be the output. When power is input from the sun gear and the carrier will be the output, see what is happening. We will try to count the gear ratio and have estimate value. Have a look. See, the sun gear is running faster. The carrier is running slower. One rotation of the sun gear. Two rotation of the sun gear. Three rotation of the sun gear. See? The sun gear has rotated three times, approximately three times, while the planet assembly has rotated only one time. We have reduced the speed. We have multiplied torque. See? This is reduction. Speed is reduced, this was running faster, the input was running faster, the output was running slower, so we have reduced the speed. By reducing speed, we have multiplied torque with a ratio of approximately 3 to 1. So this is what is happening. This is a forward speed, input, output. Now let's change them. Let this be the input and let this be the output. 
the output is running faster than the input with the similar ratio that we previously determined. Now this one is overdrive. This one is overdrive. The output is running faster than the input. This is overdrive. Now by this combination, we have one underdrive and one overdrive. We have one multiplication of torque and we have one reduction of torque. So this is one combination. The other combination, now I can change the input and the output. Let's, for example, let the ring gear be the input and let me hold the sun gear. We will have a different combination. Let's mark Let's align the marks. And now, let me hold, hold this and let me drive this be the input, ring gear be the input, and this be the output. It's a little bit tricky. Let's hold it this way. Now I'm holding the sun gear and this be the input let the carrier be the output. Now for visibility, let's bring this red mark here. This will be here. Let this be the input. Let this be the output. One complete rotation. Here it came. So there is a slight variation when this is input and this is output. There is a slight variation. This one is running faster. This one is running slower with a very small gear ratio. Let me hold this. Let this be the input. Let this be the output. See the marks. Holding the sun gear. Let this be the differential carrier be the input and this be the output. See? This is running faster. Overdrive. This is running slower. Well, the gear ratio is very small. The difference between the gear ratio is very small. But the idea is, when this is the input and this is the output, we have increased speed. Overdrive. When this is the, un the input and this is the output, we have reduction. Well, let's see how this planetary gear is used for reverse operation. When driving reverse, the planet carrier will be held stationary, whereas by changing the input and output from the sun gear to the ring gear, we can have a reverse gear. Look, for example, let me hold this stationary and let me turn this. See? They are turning in reverse. Turning in reverse. This is one reverse gear ratio. We can also have another return reverse gear ratio. Let this be the input. This will be held stationary. Let this be the output. For you to see, let's mark. This is stationary. Look. Now we have two reverse speeds. Two reverse speeds is possible by this combination. But remember, some of the ratios are weird, so they will not be used on an actual manual transmission. But here, for ease of demonstration, we will go through them all. But actually, we will not be using all the combination gear ratios. Some of the gear ratios, like for example, when, you, when we have seen this input, this output, there is no much variation. Now let's see how direct drive is taking place. We have seen reduction, we have, re we have seen overdrive, we have seen reverse gear operation. Now let's have a look at direct drive. On direct drive, 
power will be supplied on any of these two. If any of these two will be supplied with power at the same time, that will be direct drive. For example, if the sun gear and the planet gear are powered at the same time, look, if they are both powered at the same time, moving this, I mean, moving this at the same time, moving both of them will drive the whole unit. That will be direct drive. Similarly, putting power on the ring gear and the planet carrier, it will do the same thing. Hold these two stationary, hold these two together with the same power. Then if you move this, see, it will be a direct drive. So in direct drive, we will give power to two of the components. So this is how the planetary gear unit is used on an automatic transmission in order to generate different speed and torque. Well, dear viewers, that is all we have for you in this presentation. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And in another video, in the next video, we'll be looking at how to determine the gear ratio of the planetary gear unit. If you are interested, you can also have a look at that video. We will be calculating the gear ratio of this planetary gear unit. You will be surprised on how the gear ratio is calculated, especially how number of these of the carrier will be decided. If you like this video, please smash the like button. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Till then, stay safe.